Hello friends, today we are going to talk about oral motor reflexes in children. We are going to discuss seven main reflexes that can affect the child in two main areas in later life. Speech and language development and feeding. The first reflex here is called as a rooting reflex. Rooting, we are talking about a particular side. So if the cheek or the lip of that side is stimulated, the infant will turn their head reflexively towards that side. This helps the child in breastfeeding in the initial months of life, where the movement is more reflexive. So by six months of age, this movement becomes more voluntary because the child is more aware of the feeding process. Now you can imagine if this reflex is retained, the child will be mouthing too much. They will be more sensitive towards the side where this reflex is more active and they would be chewing and biting onto objects continuously. The second reflex here is the sucking reflex. So whenever the finger is placed close to the mouth of the child, there is a seal formed at the back of the tongue from front to back so that the child can take in the breast the milk and then gulp it or swallow it. So it has to remain from 6 to maybe up to 12 months of age. But after that, the action becomes more voluntary. But what if this reflex is retained in the child? Then this action becomes so reflexive in them that voluntarily understanding that food is introduced in the mouth and then they are supposed to bite it, chew it, then swallow it. All these actions do not happen and these are the children who face feeding challenges specifically related to biting and chewing. The third reflex is the tongue reflex. So when reflexively the milk or the food touches the front part of the tongue, a wave takes it back and then the swallowing happens. But the disadvantage of this is if this reflex persists beyond 12 or maybe 18 months of age, you will not be able to give the child solid food because the tongue won't move to the side to take the food for chewing and direct swallowing will happen. So the child will refuse any kind of solids and will only be restricted to liquids and semi-solids. The fourth reflex is the swallowing reflex in which if something reaches the back of our throat, there is a reflexive swallow. It remains almost till 18 months of age and then we tend to control it. It becomes more voluntary swallowing, where if we understand that the bite was too big, we need to chew more, or if there is too much liquid in the mouth, we control the extent of the swallow. So what will happen? These children will tend to puke out, vomit more. When too much food is offered to them, they'll pocket the food in the mouth and the swallowing process becomes difficult. Reflex is the bite reflex. It is a natural reflex present in an infant where if their gums are stimulated because the dentition takes up to about 9 to 12 months to develop the first teeth to appear and even beyond that. So the bite reflex, when the gums are stimulated, they tend to bite on it. This bite has a significance because it tends to create a seal around the breast which assists the child in breastfeeding or taking a bottle. But in case this reflex persists, the child will have a continuous biting reaction and they will have a tendency and impulsivity to want to bite onto things. The sixth reflex is called as a transverse tongue or lateral tongue reflex. So if the food is presented somewhere towards the side of the mouth, the tongue is likely to move towards the side in order to take it and try to chew it. But it usually becomes more voluntarily by the time the child is about one to two years of age. But if this reflex persists, the movement becomes more reflexive. The child is not able to voluntarily take control of this tongue movement and it is an important action for chewing because the tongue takes the food towards the side. The chewing happens and then it creates a seal so that the food can move back in order to swallow it. So chewing becomes a difficulty in these kids. And the final seventh one is called as a gag reflex. It is a natural reflex, even we have it as adults, but there is a difference. In younger children, this reflex is more anterior. So if you try to introduce solids initially at, to a very young child, they're more likely to gag on it. 
and that is why the lip seal the tongue seal is important during breastfeeding so that it directly goes towards the back and the reflex is not elicited but as you start introducing solids by the time the child is 9 to 10 or maybe months or even one year of age this reflex keep moving backwards this facilitates the importance of giving solids to the child as early as one year of age even if it is small pieces it's okay but solids should be introduced on time so that this reflex can go away the gag moves more posteriorly and we have more control over it Though it is not a reflex, but tongue thrust also has a significance. It is present in infants. When the lips are stimulated, the tongue tends to move out, even to the level of the lips, so that solids are not given to the child. So it's like a protective reflexive action in a child. But if it persists, the child will not be able to take solids later in life. So it is important that a correct age is identified for the child to have solid foods by maximum one year of age. They should be started along with some semi solids and liquids or milk so that the child is more active in their feeding process. The speech develops appropriately because the oral structures will be moving appropriately and you can see a difference. I hope this video was informative to you as part of our reflex integration therapy. I will be talking about therapeutic techniques that we can use for these oral motor reflexes soon enough. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos related to child development, ring the bell icon for notifications when my videos are out and do add any queries or suggestions in the comments below. We'll meet again soon. Bye.